I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, I'm delighted to introduce you to a very talented writer. Her name is Simone Wilson, and she's joining us today with her poetry collection called Roses Amidst the Thorn, The Parched Garden. It beautifully captures a couple's love journey over two decades. This collection reflects the human condition and the universal experiences of love and growth. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her wonderful work. The links are below this interview. Simone, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thank you for having me. My pleasure, my pleasure. Roses amidst the thorn. Tell us what you mean by that. Well... For the book means that roses is our love mm -hmm. that we have, the universal love that we share in relationships and with everyone else. And the thorns are society and the pressures that society puts on us with self-gratification and moving on. Mm -hmm. So I tried to express that through my poetry. And you have, and you've done it very, very well. The parched garden, is that the human condition that we're all thirsty and in need of love? Yes, and, it's yeah. like, for me, it was the breakdown of the relationship. It felt dry and parched. And no matter how much you want to, you know, revive the garden, it just was impossible. Yeah. Well, I love the metaphor that you've made there with the parched garden. It's uh, very, very poignant, that's for sure. Tell us a little bit about writing these poems. Have you written them over a period of years and collected them? Tell us about that. Yes, I've written them over a period of, I would say, 20 years, mm -hmm. written them. And to me, it was like therapy, getting out my feelings, my voice, and just making me feel that I could move on mm -hmm. from this situation. So to me, they were very, very personal. And I'm very surprised that, you know, people, other people relate to them. But mm -hmm. then it's, you know, love is universal and we all have that same human condition and we all go through those same things together. Exactly. So these are poems that you wrote Primarily for yourself to express yeah. how you felt in your love situation in your relationship. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Yes, it was it was really therapeutic mm. to just get those feelings out and to just be able to feel like I could have a voice mm. and be heard, even if it was just for me to hear it yeah. and see the reflection. Yes. Is there a favorite amongst all of the uh, roses you've written there, all the poems you've written? Do you have a favorite? Oh, um, I guess the the Parch Garden, the very first one. Yes, mm. that's my favorite. Wonderful. You don't have the book handy that you could read a little bit of that to us, do you? Yes, I have it. I happen to have it right here. Great. Well, we're looking forward to hearing that from you. If you don't mind reading it to us, that'd be wonderful. Oh, thank you. Once our marriage was a luscious, overgrown garden, every corner filled with colorful blossoms and the scent of freshness filled the air. Tending it was easy. One simply let it go its way. It began spreading leaves and tiny buds everywhere. Heaven loved this garden. It showered the necessary moisture needed to keep it lush and green. Many came to the garden and because of its abundance, often they left with enormous bouquets. The garden didn't worry about its blossoms being stolen away for it saw the joy it brought to others. So the garden was contented. Reviving itself had been so easy, involuntary, like breathing. But a fungus started to grow. At first it was small, it was insignificant. Slowly it became massive and its thirst was unquenchable. 
Every chance it got, it drank the clear water that had fallen to the garden floor. Soon the garden became parched and brown and the very earth which fed it became dry and dusty. Not even the tears swept by the garden, remembering its beauty, could sustain it. They didn't even try to bring healing waters back to replenish the garden. They accepted its death and chose to remember that once there had been a beautiful, lush, overgrown garden. Wonderful. It's beautifully written. It's heartbreaking. Um, and it's just expressed so well. It really, really is. It's Thank you, Morgan. You know, it's so heartfelt. Um, and the words just flow. And uh, it's just like I said in the beginning, it's a beautiful metaphor of an untended garden. Um, and it's sad because uh, every relationship starts out with energy and hope and love and robustness. And over the years, you start to take those roses for granted and the blossoms for granted and the fungus, you know, the rot can come into a relationship and sometimes it's beyond repair. Um, so I guess this was very therapeutic for you to write in many ways. Yes, because it was. Tell us yeah. about the writing process. Were you writing these? I guess you were writing these when your heart was broken, right? Yes, I was okay. exactly. I was really going through something because um, it just came out of nowhere. I did not see it coming. Yeah. So there was a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, a lot of confusion. And so I had all these feelings yeah. that really needed to get out. Right. And when you're going through this at first, you don't want to share it with anyone mm -hmm. else. So you go within. And for me to go within, because I'm a writer, mm -hmm. I use my writing yeah. to communicate my feelings. Yeah, yeah. And it's 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 difficult. I mean, the loss of a relationship, as anyone will tell you who's been in a, a loving relationship, that they wanted to make work. Right. Um, it's like a death. It you is. Know, you know. It's a serious death. Yeah. And you do go through the grief process of all mm -hmm. the things, the anger, the denial, the you know, the 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 pain mm -hmm. and suffering. You yeah. you feel it. Yeah. It's Absolutely. almost like truly like your your marriage becomes like a a corpse. It yeah. becomes like a corpse and you yeah. have to a relationship is only a relationship so long as two people want to be in it. Once one person decides they don't want to be in it, it's it's just amazing because it disintegrates like that. Um and we see the signs, we ignore them at times. I mean, it's like every every sad love song we've ever listened to or every sad love poem we've listened to. It's yes. um it's it is heartbreaking. What do you hope some of the reader what readers take away from your book and from your I want collection? them to to sort of relate to it so they know that this is not just something unique to themselves. Everybody who goes through this type of situation usually has the same feelings. And I want them to know that you know, it's not just unique to you. These are normal feelings that happen and don't feel bad about expressing them because they are real and they are validated through the human condition. Mm. Do you feel that loving relationships are more difficult to sustain nowadays with, you know, one, there's a lot of money out there, which gives people right. choices. There's a lot of temptation out there with the internet. Um, do you feel like it's tougher on couples today? I do. I really think it's very hard because society places so many easy paths that you can go down mm -hmm. and it, everything looks like it's glittering and exciting and adventurous. And sometimes we lose our sense of what we really want because we see a bigger glowing picture. And I think it's very, very difficult yeah. for couples now. Yep, you don't want to lose that garden that you've nurtured over decades. No, that's for no. sure. Yeah, absolutely. Are you doing any more writing? 
Yes, I'm. It's now I'm on the third book. I did Roses and Mr. The Thorns, then The Parch Garden. Now I'm doing New Beginnings because finally accepting that closure and how it feels to move on. Um, I'm expressing that in my new poetry. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, is it already released, your latest book? No, I'm still in the process of writing right now. Okay, sounds great. And when do you write? Do you have like a time of day that you like to get up and write or do you just move? Do you just write when the, uh, the move, you know, the feelings move you? Yeah, when I have the feelings to sit down and write, sometimes it's, you know, something I've seen on TV that will mm -hmm. trigger it or hear a song or just speaking with someone and then I feel triggered to write. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And what's your reaction been from your family when they've read your lovely poems? Uh, they were moved. They validated me with my feelings and um, they encouraged me to keep writing and to, you know, when I feel that way, write about it. Yeah. They were really, you know, encouraging all of them. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we'll encourage you as well. Keep on writing. These poems are terrific. Simone Wilson has a beautiful collection of poetry out there. It's called Roses Amidst the Thorn. It is a beautiful, beautiful collection of heartfelt works that have been penned by this poet that you will love, that you will be inspired by, that will make you reflect upon your own loving relationship. One that you're in, you might value it more or one that you've lost might help you come to terms with it. Simone, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Oh, thank you for having me. My pleasure, my pleasure. I enjoyed our talk. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight. <laughs>